Welcome to the Production Talk podcast with me, Jan of MixArtist.com.au. In this podcast series, we celebrate the modern way of producing music. We want to talk about all things related to songwriting, recording at home and music production. So if you produce your music at home, this is the place to be. Please subscribe and recommend this podcast to all your friends. This is the Production Talk Podcast, Episode 52. Welcome back to another episode of the Production Talk Podcast. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the country that this conversation was recorded on, the proud Arakul people of the Bundjalung Nation, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Today we are returning to the second part of the interview with Adam Biggs of Big Sound. We were in the middle of a long discussion about live sound and Adam's musical philosophy and the way he approaches his business and how he got through COVID and all. So if you haven't listened uh, to the first part yet, my recommendation would be to go to your podcast application, hit the subscribe button while you're on the way and go back to episode 51, which is the first part of the interview with Adam Biggs. Today we are continuing this conversation and we were just talking about how bands can prepare themselves uh, for great sounding live shows and I would like to lead back into the interview with a little example. We're dealing with a band and the band is getting ready to play a couple of shows, a tour, and they're rehearsing at the moment and getting themselves ready. So one of the things is to learn their own stage volume. And I guess, you know, working with the singer, so everybody needs to adjust their own volume to, to the singer. So would it be good for a band to, let's say, practice, let's say, a louder set on a bigger stage? But also learn to play the same set a bit quieter yeah. for a smaller stage. Yeah. Would that be a good thing to do? Absolutely. And, yeah. and you, you do get that like, you know, in, mm. in, into your bigger tours, you know, you, you have those opportunities where you'll say, okay, cool. Well, um, we're, we're going to have, um, we're going to have a full day of production at the Horton Pavilion. Mm. Um, great. So now we know what it's going to sound like when we're there. Um, now, what you, you'll often see, and you know, fans love it. Uh, what you'll often see is that big bands will do tiny shows before yeah. they do a run because it's actually fundamental to that band understanding the, the, the way the band works together. Like, you know, yeah, right. So, you know, you'll see, like, you know, you, you'll have a touring band, you know, like. The, the classic one is bands like the Stones and whatever, like they, they'll they'll turn up and like or Prince, you know, Prince would go and do like nightclub gigs, you know, like in the middle of you know like sell out stadium tours and stuff like that, because you do fundamentally hear and understand things differently on a smaller stage, and those smaller stages are really the ones that sort out, yeah, the men from the boys, and if I can see you use that analogy, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, right. because it's mm -hmm. there's that sense of. Um, where do I fit? You know, because I don't have all the space. I don't have physical space, but I don't have yeah. the 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 uh, the the space to generate a large sound or, or play extra notes or all this sort of stuff without it just kind of becoming a a, a mush of everything. So, yep. so those smaller stages or those smaller rehearsal spaces really do help you understand uh what what are the fundamentals what are the important things to deliver musically mm. um and some sometimes it can be a, a matter of going you know what you just don't need that much gain on that overdrive pedal yeah or mm -hmm. you or you don't need that much reverb on the vocal yes, yes. or you know like those mm. sorts of things mm. you know because that that's the stuff where you know i went and helped a Uh, my my son's school uh, were having their sort of showcase concert the other week, and and I, I dropped him off, and I just stuck my head in to say hi to the music teacher, and I sort of walked in and was standing in front of the stage and looking at the the way they had the the band all mic'd up and whatever like that, and I'm like, well, um, you know, you've you've got to you, you might want to think about this with this microphone, you might. Want. So I ended up staying, <laughs> so I ended up staying of course, you know, uh, helping come on. the whole up. They and set and you up. They, they set, set. They totally <laughs> But but it is that thing of like mm. like literally having these these young musicians walk on stage who who don't have a lot of experience in playing in a in a a, a live situation they've they've sat together in a room and they've yep. jammed things out and they've like had fun and that's I mean, that's the fundamental reason we do any of this um, 
But, you know, like they get onto a stage and it's like, you know, the guitar player is is playing, you know, in this particular tune, he was they were playing a queen tune and he, he's playing the guitar part and I'm like I'm like, do you want to have a look at your pedal board and maybe look at taking some gain out of this? Because mm. at the moment you're filling up this massive space with this sound and it's taking up all of the room that you've got a keyboard player there doing this thing and you've got a yep. singer trying to deliver this and, you know, yep. it, and, and, and it's just things like that where you go, you don't need to be super distorted to sound heavy. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't need yeah, yeah. to be, you know, like mm. super loud to sound big. You know, mm-hmm. it, that all of those things that you learn about your own stuff. Um, so, and and that's that requires a huge compromise of ego. Yeah, for all of us, you know, for everyone, you know, like yes, I want to turn the PA up and and like have everything just like bam, you know, right there in people's faces. But at the same time, if if what I've got standing on stage is a guy with an acoustic guitar and a stomp box and a quiet vocal singing folk songs, that mm. doesn't need to be delivered at 100 decibels because yeah. that's yeah, not that's what right. that, that's not mm. the act. Mm, that's right. That's so, right. you know, I, I've mm. literally had a tour manager, uh, a, a production manager come up to me when I was playing, uh, when we are doing a show at the Sydney Meyer Music Bowl in Melbourne. And he literally said to me, he said, look, I know you like to mix quiet, but this is the one where you'll want to turn up. And I'm like, My, okay. You know, I've never personally mixed the Sydney Meyer. I'm like, cool. Okay, well, maybe there's there's a good reason for that. So we start sound checking. I'm like, oh, I'll just give a few more dB. I'll just see how it sits. And, and I'm like, oh, I don't like how it sounds now. You know, like I, I, mm. I actually don't, that, that's not the show anymore. Like it doesn't. Yeah. So, you know, like, so I'm like, well, maybe I'm second guessing myself. So I go running up the hill, you know, all the way to the back, you know, and it holds a lot, you know, 12,000 people or whatever that place holds. So I went running up the hill to the back to have a listen with it turned up and then had my my systems guy just bring it back to where I had it before. I'm like, there's three dB a difference. And that doesn't sound like a lot, you know, but three dB a difference. And you're standing at the back of the place and I'm like, it's definitely quieter. Um, but it sounds like it should now, like, you know, like pulling that back, like taking, taking that little bit of energy out of it Mm. actually worked. It's like, yeah, cool. Um, what that, what that means is that you've got a, you've got a relationship with the audience and the audience is part of your performance. And in that case, when you're delivering an act like that, where it's not about volume, it's not about getting punched in the face. Um, the relationship is we're going to li- deliver this to you the absolute best it can sound. Your part in that is to shut up and listen and engage with it at the level it's at. Yes. And, and, that, is, mm. and that for me came from mixing mm. jazz in my early days. Mm. You know, it's no point in having a jazz guitar or a saxophone or a vocal or whatever like that punching over the top of a loud crowd because you can't win. It doesn't matter how big your PA is. I've been at events where the crowd gets loud and it doesn't matter how big your PA is. You will not win if you've got a loud crowd. Mm. All you'll do is keep pushing it louder. They'll get louder. Mm. Yeah, The beer glasses will get clinked yeah. together. The, yeah, yeah. the people will be just shouting at their friends from across the space. It doesn't matter how how much power you have, you won't win against an audience that is not with you. So you have to meet that audience somewhere in the middle there. You know, you have to have that relationship with them where they will literally come back to pin drop quiet. You know, I've done mm. gigs at the rails in Byron Bay with singer-songwriters who are very quiet, introspective guys, and they've literally shut the place up. You know, like this rowdy, raucous outside, touristy, backpackery kind of bar, and you can hear a pin drop in there because because they listen. They're listening. They're active. Yeah. They're involved mm. in that performance, and they're not there to drink beer and have something happening in the background. They're there for that artist. Wow. Mm. and that's. That's an incredible thing to be a part of, like yeah. to be in a space where the audience feels like they're actually part of this whole thing, you know, like not just there to be delivered to, mm. but they're a part of the experience. The artist feels that, 100% the artist feels that. 
Uh, they're standing up on stage. They can see the attention they're getting. They can hear when people sing along with those bits in the chorus that are appropriate or whatever. That relationship building is as much part of the sound delivery as it is of the, the actual performance from the artist. Um Sounds wanky though, doesn't it? But it's no, 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 not at all, not at all. Actually, you know, I can really relate to that because then I experience the same thing when I attend shows mm. or when I mix shows. It's a give and take. The musicians are just one cog in the big machine that is the uh, the show, and the audience plays a big role in it. So one of the hardest shows I've ever mixed was, you know, a, a really good rock band mm. in a huge hall with fifty people. Yeah. That was the hardest job I've ever done in my life. You know, that was really difficult to mix because there was this mismatch between the energy. We didn't have the audience yeah. there. And I've yeah. also mixed uh, bands, you know, in, in small venues that were just packed to the absolute yeah. maximum. And, you know, it, it, I always prefer that. Yeah, you know, it works. It's, it's in the end, it's all about like, the audience. Yeah, it? look, that's the thing, you yeah. know. Like, mm. I, you know, I've, I've, mm. I've, I've mixed, you know, one person on stage to... 10,000 people and then I've mixed, you know, like yeah. whole bands in rooms where they almost outnumber the audience. And it's like at the end of the day, like all of those things are valid and all those things are like can be the best gig you can have, you know, mm. like bigger gigs aren't necessarily better gigs, you know. It's, you know, it's it, it, I, I think that the bigger you go, the harder it is to have that connection with the audience. Yeah, yeah, right. And these days with technology, you know, uh, there's so much possible you now with mm. digital technology yeah. and uh, um, time core productions where there's electronic elements coming off computers yeah. and uh, uh, computer generated light shows. And does that take away from it in some ways? <sighs> is, is that a contradiction in some ways? I don't think it fundamentally takes away from it. I think mm. that the technology uh, is a tool. Uh, like mm. like any other tool, um, yeah. whether we're talking about an uh, you know whether we're talking about a band that is playing loud on stage with fifteen wedges on stage and and everyone's cranked and everything, you know you you take that same act and you put everyone on in ears and um, yeah maybe the guitar players and bass player move to uh, modeling gear and and uh, and yeah maybe the drummer is triggering things on pads instead of like hitting cymbals or whatever yeah all those things are just tools like it's it's all just a means of mm. delivering um, and absolutely things like you know MIDI triggering time code and things like that those things are incredible like the 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 level of precision you can get out of things like that uh can certainly make for a, a, a an amazing integrated you know passionate experience but just as much they can turn it into a bland and disinteresting yeah show you know i i, I there's there's a, a touring act that i i, I sort of chose not to continue working with because when when we first started working with them, we're like, man, these guys are just, there's so much energy in this show, you know, and that you really feel the songs and you really, like, engage with it. And as time went on, they added more and more uh, elements of, of backing tracks and, and, and triggered things. And the last show I did with them, like, they didn't enjoy it any more than anyone else did, you know. Like you mm. could see it, you know. Like they're like standing up there and you know, like literally saying, "Like I oh, just just bed the vocal back into the backing tracks," you know, because it's like the vocals in the backing tracks anyway. So, you know, the person's essentially just coming forward to do like shout outs on the microphone while they swing a beer around, and and it's like they're playing mm. guitar, but they for long periods of time they just don't play guitar, but there's still guitar there, and there's like. That stuff is like, yeah. it's about a show. Then it's not not about delivering music. It's just like mm. we could walk off stage, and nothing would change. Yeah, I see. I and see. that's that's a mm. really fundamental so, difference. To we're using these things because we can't afford to bring a keyboard player on this tour, yeah, or yeah. we can't. Yeah, you know, that that's a really different thing. Mm. And so uh, there's something. It's overproduced in some overproduced. ways. You know, overproduced is a problem. Or, 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 or leaning or, too hard yeah, on the yeah, tools. Yeah. 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 A bit overthinking, I guess, yeah. that comes into play as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Good. Yeah. So these days, it's very common to, you know, see a band on stage and there's a very good chance that there is, you know, a laptop among yeah. these days. Yeah. yeah. Um, give us a bit of a checklist. You know, a lot of things can go wrong. What should Ooh. somebody operating a computer on stage 
prepare for um, to make sure everything <laughs> runs smoothly? Uh, there's there's an there's an old adage in uh, in recording that I remember is it's like it doesn't exist unless it exists in three places, um, <laughs> and and I think in live sound uh, that is that is just as applicable. Um, you know, if you're if you're taking a, an Ableton rig or something out to to sort of you know time code into a band show or whatever like that, um, you're taking two Ableton rigs. You know, like you're not. Mm. You know, there's 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 just so many little things that can go wrong. You know, when, when, you know, people were plugging gear in, in the fifties and sixties, you know, if you showed them a USB connector, they'd laugh you out of the room. Like you, you, you'd never use something that flimsy on a band stage, you know, like, so, mm -hmm. you know, things like, yeah. And MIDI cable. MIDI cables. Same thing. Yeah. MIDI They're cables, not really yeah. built for touring, They're are they? They're not. They, they mm. were never, never thought that they would kind of go that way. So yeah. I guess they, you know, there's just things like that where they're just like, cool. Well, you know, certainly, you know, how sturdy is your laptop? You know, are you casing it? Are you carrying in a decent case? You know, you, if you're flying, you know, how, how are you packing that? And, you know, and what's your backup? You know, so it's like, well, okay, well, you, you probably want to back up interface, you know, if you're like running multiple tracks and stuff like that, then yeah, you're absolutely going to need a backup interface. Um, we've worked with bands where they, they literally have fail safe, uh, playback systems running where they, they have switches set up and the switcher will take all the inputs from one laptop and all the inputs from the other laptop. And, and there's, there's gear that's designed to switch over in a failure. So yeah, right. These, so if, if a computer dies on yeah. stage, it switches to the backup yeah. solution yeah. and that has to run in parallel. Yeah, and, and it runs wow. in parallel and it's it's um you know, and you know, we've we've had those kind of systems where it's like, well, we've done a show like that on a festival stage where it was a direct sun into the tech area on that particular afternoon and one of the laptops got hot. And mm. yeah, there's your show gone, you know. So yeah. so that sort of stuff, you, you have to you have to assume assume that nothing works as it's supposed to you know yeah yeah, yeah right yeah right <laughs> so mm. you, you've always got spares you know mm. if you, and that that's that's laptops that's you know spare mm. vocal mic that's having some cable sync size stage for the inevitable something goes down in the middle mm. of you know you've sound checked everything you've line checked everything and then you go to walk up and the vocal's not on you know these things do happen you know and they they happen at all levels it's not it's not a something where you can look at and go, oh, well, they just didn't prepare. It's like th th stuff does happen, you know, dirt gets into connectors or, yeah. you know, like, you know, you're a blues fest and, you know, there's been mud tracked in and out of the, you know, over the top of your cabling for the, mm. for the last four days. And it's like, yeah, the things do happen. So you, you have to be prepared for those backup of contingencies. And I think part of that preparation is, is mental uh, as well because if you panic when these things happen, Oh, yeah, that's the end of it. It's the end of it. Mm, yeah. So, you so, know, we, we had a festival event mm. the other day where uh, something happened in the middle of the show and it was, you know, one of those random, like, wow, I never thought that would happen sort of events. And and your choice is flap and panic and stress out about it and it doesn't get it fixed any quicker. <laughs> that's true. And when you do finally get it mm. back – back and running you're stressed you're you're like trying to come back down from yeah. there um and trying to get back into the headspace where you actually just want to make the music as opposed to like waiting for the next thing to go wrong mm. so uh, that mental preparation yeah. that men mental comfort which comes from knowing you've done your job you, you've yeah. you've thought about things that might happen and you've accounted for stuff and and you're you're ready for contingencies and when those things do happen um you roll with it. You just go, mm. yeah, okay, cool. That didn't work. Yeah, that's fine. What's our plan B? Mm, I see. And I guess, you know, when people stress, it, it sort of prevents good troubleshooting, I find. Oh, yeah. You know, that, Absolutely. Uh, you know, it might be just a very obvious solution. Yeah. But when people really freak out, they won't see it, even no. if it was right in front of their right. face. You know? exactly. So it's, it's about staying calm. Exactly, yeah. So that's... And thinking clean and logically, methodically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and you know, like, and, and it's mm. you know, just the as per all these things, it's usually mm. the easiest and simplest, uh, simplest thing that goes wrong. Um, mm. And it is just that matter of like being able to stand back and and maybe stopping before you actually fix the problem to go. Actually, what is the problem? You know, mm. is it simply that I haven't unmuted the channel on mm -hmm. layer three of the disc, or mm -hmm. you know, is like just the 
the simplest things that you yeah. will like, oh, like, oh my God, no, we don't have the guitar. Oh, that's right. That's because they plugged into DI2 instead of DI4. Mm. You know, like all that stuff, yeah, where it's just like just being comfortable and relaxed in your work yeah, and present and, you know, and just, just focusing on that stuff so that you can actually then yeah. solve these things without them becoming a big yeah. issue. And and I guess one part to that is as well to keep it as simple as it can oh, be yeah. and avoid unnecessary complex yep. uh, setups. Yep. I once ran a, a show at a venue where the microphone, vocal microphone was plucked into, you know, input 15, yeah. which then came through on the other side on 18 yeah. and then was patched through input 13 on the console. And I was just like, you needed a mathematical degree yeah. to understand where things were. Yeah. You know, and why not just keep numbers straight? Yeah. And, and, you know, and there, there like is that, that yeah. there's that sort of lazy mm. sort of mentality in, in digital consoles nowadays, because you can literally, you know, refer to a soft patching, you know, like mm. literally you can go, Oh, I won't move it on the, Concert, I won't move it on the stage rack because I can just soft patch it. Like that's that's the beginning uh, of the yeah, end for me. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. like mm. it, wherever possible, mm. I'll, I'll change a physical connection because keep it's, it simple. Yeah, yeah, keep it simple mm. because at, yeah. at that point, mid show where the stage is dark and you're like scrambling around underneath something trying to mm. figure out why something is not working, like that stuff saves you. Yeah, saves you a lot of time and a lot yeah. of stress. It so. would otherwise backfire when when things get heated. Oh know? yeah, yeah. 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 Um, one more thing that I would like to talk about quickly is that I've seen more and more singers arriving these days uh, patching their vocals through their own effect pedals. <sighs> what is your take on that? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? How uh, do I say this without, how, how, without offending people? <laughs> uh. <laughs> be honest. Be brutally honest with us. And we're not just talking okay. singers here, you know, like this, obviously. Yeah. We're, we're, horn players, you yeah, find horn it everywhere. Horn players, you know, like, mm. you know, like. Guitar players, yeah, mm. like that's that's kind of been a thing for a long time. You know, most guitar players obviously run through a whole heap of their own stuff, and that's mm. that's part of their sound. And and to a degree, you have to accept that because maybe that is part of that vocalist sound is that they they want these specific sounds. Mm. Um, my experience personally with them is that there are no good vocal processes. <laughs> out yeah. There. Uh, now, having said that, there are people who make them work. Mm. Um, you know, I, uh, th there's certain acts where it's just like, I get it. I get why you're doing it this way and it does work for you. Um, what I generally find, and I've, I've used this as a solution a couple of times when I've had people turn up with these things, generally the preamps in those kind of units are terrible. Yes, um, usually very buzzy, noisy, very yeah, fuzzy around the edges. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, either overly sensitive or under sensitive. Um, and and what what you're trying to convey to an artist when they turn up with something like that is that what they're doing is that they're taking the mix out of your control. Mm -hmm. Um, so what sounds good to them on headphones or in their speakers in their bedroom when they're practicing and they're seeing it up and they're like, oh, that's the tone I want. That's the yeah. Whether you're a guitar player or a bass player or a drummer or a singer or a keyboard player or whatever like that, the stage is a fundamentally different space yes. to your practice room. Um, and so the things that work and that sound good in a practice space don't necessarily translate. Um, so it's a conversation. And again, it's back to that communication and respect thing of just mm. going, you know, oh, cool. Okay. So you've got your Digitech, uh, or, or whatever vocal processing, your TC Helion or whatever it is. Um, and you've brought that in and you're, and you love plugging it in and getting this big cathedral reverb on your vocal. I'm like, cool. So, um, I'd just like to point out to you that we're in a cathedral. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like, you know, like, that's yeah, that's yeah. The thing. no we've it's got like, two <laughs> yeah it, it's and it is that thing of like cool well that might be the vocal sound that you hear in your head and that might actually be what you want to deliver to the audience so uh you know again it's about uh communicating and solutions mm. and and like working with the artist and so i'll have things where people will turn up like that and i'll go cool here i've i've got a i've got a splitter here i've got a mic splitter so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the mic into the splitter I'm going to take a dry signal off one side of that splitter and I'm going to send the other side to your effects unit. And then at the console, I'm going to have two channels. I'm going to have the dry vocal and I'm going to have your affected vocal. Now, what that gives me the ability to do is blend, uh, phase align, get everything right. 
everything up front so that I still have, regardless of what else is coming to me, I still have a vocal I can work with and I have a vocal I can send back to you that's going to sound good Mm. Um, because that is one of the biggest challenges with working with those vocal processes is you could do so much with them out front. You You can go, okay, cool, I'll work with that. When you start sending back a really heavily affected and processed vocal into a fallback wedge or an in-ear send or something like that, that person's not hearing what they th- thought they were going to be hearing. And mm. that becomes challenging. You know, that sort of breaks your relationship down where that person's going, but this sounds great because I've used it previously and it sounds great. And now it doesn't sound great. Why doesn't it sound great? Um, and there's your relationship gone, you know, mm. like then they, they, they don't trust you. They don't feel like you're doing your job properly. Um, so that that level of being able to say, work with me on this and I'll show you why I want to do it this way. And, you know, you, you might have a full band on stage and maybe the only person that wants to hear that super heavily affected reverby pitch shifted vocal is the vocalist. Everyone else just wants their cue. You know, so those sort of solutions where it's like, it's not about Mm -hmm. saying that's a piece of crap and I don't want it on my stage and, you know, like don't, you know, I've got effects in the desk and I can put a big reverb on your vocal if you want a big reverb. No, the people don't want to hear that. They don't, they don't want to, especially like on a one-off, you know, like if you're talking about a tour, uh, you know, if you're working with Kimbra or someone Mm -hmm. like that, who's like, that's such a key thing on there. On their whole thing is like I want to be able to loop and I want to be able to you know pitch shift and and you know harmonize and things like that. You can't say that's not part of their thing because it of is. Course. Yeah. yeah. So the, the the thing is around like, well, how do you work with that artist so that they fundamentally get what they want? Yeah. And you can also deliver what they expect out front mm. because. I'll guarantee you the reverb that sounded great in their bedroom is not going to sound great on a big stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's it's that it's that balance, you know, and, okay. and it's it's a, again it's just about respect because it, mm. it's not my decision at the end of the day. If someone goes, no, that's my sound, then that's their sound, and I'll do the very very best I can with it. Mm. Um, but uh, I. I'm yet to come across one of those units that has delivered to me what the artist thinks it's going to. Mm. And um, if some of those artists now carry a splitter with them because they get it. They you know, get like it. They've, yeah. Yeah. they've like done the show and they've, they've I've helped them set that up and they're like, all oh, right, okay, yeah. And, you know, you can get to a great point where you can sort of work with one of those artists and they're like, there's a wet, dry control on their effects unit and you go, run it all the way wet. So I'm not getting any of your vocal through there. I'm just mm-hmm. getting the effects. And then yeah. I've got two channels to work with. They're basically independent. I can get a great vocal tone and then add that sound that you want on top of it. Yeah, yeah. And right. that's like, that gives you all the controls, all the best the control. of all, both worlds. Exactly. So, yeah. so again, that's it's mm. right down to communication and preparation. So, if mm. if someone knows before an event, mm-hmm. um, you know, like oh, I don't know how many, like it's it's a running joke in the industry that you've never that no one's ever seen an accurate stage plan. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's it, 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 turning up. Yeah. Uh, knowing what to expect. So, you know, I've got mm. I've got a show out in the weekend, um, Pete Murray and the Beautiful Girls. Oh, fantastic. And um, yeah, it'll be heaps of fun. You know, yeah. it'll be it'll be heaps of fun. I know yeah. all those guys. I've toured with them. Um, I'm not personally mixing either of those bands this time. They're, they're coming through one of my venues. Um, but I know what to expect. And they've forwarded me everything. Um, we've had those conversations with the, the production team. Um, we've said, oh, yeah, any any surprises? You know, anything that we don't know about? Um, because last weekend I did a show where the band sent me through uh, an input list and no stage plan and no yeah. setup and no whatever. And they turn up and I had set up for them and they're like, actually, the drummer um, sets up on the front of the stage over here and he needs this in terms of his monitoring and that sort of thing. Mm. And you're working a really tight window of time on these smaller shows. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we can make that work. 
And so you're like repatching things and you're running things from different places yeah. and you've got you know, all that fun and games. And that's just a distraction. So and that's time you don't have to put the sound right. No, exactly. Mm. So like, right, so now we're going to lose 15 minutes or mm. whatever it is from your hour-long sound check just to do something we would have done for you beforehand. So that sort of communication where you can just say to people, it's like preparation, you know, like know what you're bringing, know what the sound person can expect. You know, some bands are great. Like they literally will give you a, a breakdown of what they want in their monitors, you know. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, you'll have like six people in a band and you'll have yeah. like some I've, – I've had people where they've had like pie charts and things like that of like what they want to hear in their monitors. I'm like, that's awesome because it's like cool. – Yeah, you're like you basically sound check. Two minutes into the sound check, everyone's like, yep, cool, I'm happy. Fantastic. It's like, yeah. you know, because they, they prepare it, you know. Like, I might never have worked with that band before, but, you know, the, if the drummer walks in and says, you know, uh, let's say Vaudeville Smash comes in and they go, cool, we're basically an 80s concept band playing original music. So what we want is we want really he- heavily gated reverbs on the drums and we want, you know, like this slapback delays and we want, yeah, this kind of, yeah, you know, these kind of bass sounds, and we want this kind of guitar mm-hmm. sound, and like, and you're like, sweet, awesome, cool, I can work with that. And then even before they hit their first note, you've got in your head how to make that work. You've got the effects dialed in, you've got everything the presets, dialed. Yeah, you know, organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so the cue set. Mm. Yeah, so mm. like, yeah, you know, like literally from the mm. get go, you you you're kind of relaxed, and you're mm-hmm. like, yeah, cool, I know what the, I know what to expect. Yeah, if that same band turns around and says, actually, our latest album is a Screamo album, that's going to really mess you up. But yeah, that's, yeah, okay. that's the thing is it's like those last minute mm. changes was where they go, oh, actually, we couldn't bring the keyboard player on this run, so we've got a playback rig. So, okay, cool. So how many channels do you need? You know, this, that, and the other. Those changes, if, if your crew and your musicians are all communicating and, and preparing, those things are no big deal. No one stresses about that stuff. Um, but you know, if you turn up on the day and say, actually, we need another eight DIs because yeah. we've got a playback rig, uh, yeah. and, we, and we expect to just have a three piece band with mm. 10 inputs or something, yeah, it's like, oh, well, actually, we're not prepared for that. We don't yeah, have um, show starts in two minutes. Here's our surprise orchestra, exactly. Yeah, yeah. like literally, yeah. like that stuff happens, you know, mm. like it's. Yeah, yeah, like so, and then it's like everyone's stressing, the artists are stressing because they're not getting what they thought they needed. Yeah. Yeah. So I once had a band, um, they had vocals and keyboards, and uh, we had, you know, literally they arrived a minute before show start, and then they told me, oh, you know, uh, I'm not going to use my keyboard, I can see you've got a grand piano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One minute to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. It and, doesn't and, have to be that way. And yeah. and some of those can be really amazing yeah. events, you know, like yeah. when you when you turn a when you turn an act on its head and um you just go, Well, let's let's take all those other mm. things away, you know. Let's you know, I, I I had a show with a bunch of touring acts years ago where they everyone was sort of you know, there's a bunch of known acts and they're all playing their own songs one after the other but they're all playing on each other's songs too so you know it was great it was really nice mm. some mix of stuff and then after sound check um one of the guys said oh you know what i'd love to do and we tried it once and it didn't work but what i'd love to do is just have like a single microphone set up in the front in a condenser mic set up at the front of the stage and for everyone just to come on stage and do an a cappella version of this song and it'll just be me playing banjo and one of the guys will play uh, fiddle mm-hmm. and there'll be eight vocals. and um, Around a single condenser and mic. Around a single condenser mic. Mm. And, you know, with a big PA. And it's like, yeah, okay, look, I didn't bring a single large diaphragm condenser because that wasn't in the rider and the whatever. Uh, but look, the video guy's still on his way and I know he's got one at home. So I just called him up and said, look, can you throw this in the kit? We set it up. Check the you know check the gain. No one's there for sound check, so we're literally like the video guy standing on stage talking into it. So I know that it's not going to feed back if it's you know on stage. Then the band comes in for that song, and they perform, and we've never done it before, and they've never done it before well, and it becomes this moment where the music just transcends the technology, and it's it's literally eight people on a stage 
singing to a room and there's nothing in between. Yeah, you know, like that microphone disappears because it's like literally you've taken all of the tech out of it and you've taken all of the, the yeah, will this work or how are we going to do this and how's it, you know, where's the volume set for this? And, and it literally becomes eight people on a stage singing into an audience, you know, and it takes all of the tech out of it. The PA disappears basically. Magic, absolutely Whoa. magic, you know. And 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 a moment that literally mm. years later, people who are at that show will come up and comment on that one song. Yeah, right. You know, like you know, they'll come up and say, "Oh, is that it, that, oh, it's could that have backfired gig? on you." You know, oh, the last star from Cadenza on stage. That's, could have that's just risky. Been a that's so risky. Uh, uh, the uh, odds uh, of this going well are, yeah, are not, yeah, not yeah. in your favor. Not in my favor yeah, at all. Yeah. And have done it since with bad results. Yeah. Um, but you know at that. That trust, you know, that that thing where the artists have gone, you know what, we think this will work because we're really comfortable on stage and we've done our sound check and we feel comfortable and we feel like you're listening and that you're doing your job well. Mm. And that's when they come up and say, hey, this is a curveball. Could we do this, you know? And because you've got that trust and you've got that relationship and communication, yeah, you can go, yeah, let's give it a go. You know, like it's not mm. like no, sorry, that's not on the rider. Yeah, it's like yeah, I can that that could be a really nice moment, and um, and you know, it does it it brings those moments where you're just like wow, that's one for the ages. Wow, and wow. Uh, you know, so so yeah, I think that's a great story. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it is one of those things where, and I recorded that gig and and yeah, li I listen to it every now and again still. It, you know, it's like it was just one of those cracker shows where it's like everything worked. Mm. And, um, you know, and as I said, you know, I like literally have people from, you know, I, I do a gig in that town now and people come up and go, oh, I was at that show like eight years ago. And I, I remember this song they did. And I'm like, yeah, I remember that song too. Wow. And yeah, like that's super cool. Mm. Like, you know, why wouldn't you want to do cool things like that? So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Well, um, last question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm chewing your ear. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Keep going. Keep going. Most of the time but, on uh, this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If I ask you to look into your crystal ball, what will the next five years bring wow. uh, for the live sound and music industry as a whole? Um, what is your prediction? From, from seeing people coming back to events and seeing people come back, back to music after COVID, um, People need it. Like people need to go out and be in these spaces and listen to music and and feel that connection. Yes. Um so people will keep coming out, you know, regardless of if we have outbreaks and things, yeah. People will keep coming out. There'll be changes and there have been changes. And um and the new normal is is getting rewritten every time we do a show. Um so I, I don't I don't even want to risk an idea of like what that looks like, but I, I know people will keep coming out to see music. I know that the technology advances incrementally nowadays rather than in giant steps. Um, you know, the next model of console is not going to change the game. It's not going to mm. rewrite the way we do things, but it might add a couple of nice tools to the kit that make it easier for us to do what we do. Um, uh, and I welcome that, you know, like I think, I think the more tools you have, the better. Um, it, again, it's just that judicious use, you know, in the same way that I, I don't want a, a singer turning up with a vocal processor and, and, and taking all the, the control away from me. I don't, I don't want um, to have a console that is so complicated that, um, it takes away the sense of um, control mm. from the mm -hmm. engineer. Yeah, um, I see it all the time with people coming in with like massive racks of of plugins loaded on a console, and um, and really struggling. You know, really struggling to connect with it because they just mm. you know there's there's so many things between the nice pristine vocal and yeah. and the speaker that uh, I know the problem. Yeah, so yeah, I've used all the plugins that I have, and it's yeah. still not sounding great. Yeah, yeah. So let's. Take like twice as many. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, that, that's yeah, the thing. Take them the, off. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, you know, like mm. start with start with the good source. Mm. Um, you know, but I think 
Yeah, I think in terms of live music and live sound, uh, I, for me personally, I, I'm I'm really happy to be working uh, with specific genres and specific musicians that that speak to me. Um, I'm very happy to support my crew and my venues to do other things. But for me personally, as I get older, uh, I guess I just look at it and go, you know, I don't, I don't want to go and do an EDM gig. I don't want to do a screamo band. You know, I might occasionally like to listen to some of that stuff, but I don't want to mix it. Um, and I think a lot of engineers are going that way where they're just like, you know what, I, there's enough work around that I can be doing the stuff I love mm. and focusing on the stuff I love and not be, you know, hating my job four out of five shows. Um, and I think that's great, you know. It's it's really hard for someone like me who's, like, trying to employ people to do gigs. Um, there's a band that no one on my entire team likes working with um, musically. Um, nice people, really lovely people, but just musically, no, none of us can deal with this band. And um, they get a lot of gigs, and it's literally become the running joke of what excuses are people going to put on the calendar for not working with this band? And you know, it's. Uh, <laughs> I think it's 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 sort of one of those things where it's just like, yeah, we 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 have all those kind of things. But at the end of the day, like, if someone comes to me and says, "I don't want to work with this music because it doesn't." It doesn't bring me joy. I just don't enjoy it. I don't want to do that. I don't do it well because of that. Um, I feel like it's going to kind of keep going that way. Like like more and more people in the industry are just going to go, you know what, that's not me. I'm not going to do that. Mm. Um, and more and more artists are going to be like, you know what, I don't want to do these venues anymore or I don't want to do yeah. you know, this kind of touring anymore or you know, I've got options now. I can mm. I can look at you know, like mm. you know, I can I can tour small venues, do mm. do more shows, um, to less people per show. Yeah. Um what well, well said. Like yeah, I've, like mm. that thing of like I think people have, have mm. learned uh, like I think what that's one of the fundamental lessons out of this whole COVID thing is people are going like, Why do we do what we do? Because it can all get taken away. So yeah. you may as well do it well and enjoy yeah. it. Passion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I can sense it when I'm at a show. I can hear whether the engineer's heart is in it or not. Absolutely, it, it is absolutely it is super obvious. And yeah. you know, I, I've been to bands where you know the engineer clearly had a different genre in mind. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, like a reggae band mixed like a rock band. You yeah, know, that just doesn't work. And yeah. uh, you, we don't want that. It's, no. it's much better for somebody whose heart is fully in it to yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. I'm fully on board with that. Yeah, absolutely. So lovely. Mm. So yeah. So uh, mm. he is hoping mm. for an industry where um, mm. there's enough work and enough shows and uh, enough people to fill those roles that uh, we can all do what we want to do because we actually love it. You know, that's nice. okay. That's a that's a perfect world, Good. isn't it? All right. <laughs> um, if one of our listeners wants to reach out to you and connect and maybe possibly book you, yeah. what's the best place to find you? Uh, look, my, my most active uh, communication uh, streams are uh, on Facebook, Big Sounds Productions. Uh, and, and the link is in the show notes. Yes, great. <laughs> and, uh, and on Instagram, I think it's bigsounds.com.au. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can you can certainly reach out and have a conversation, uh, and yeah, we can swap emails and do all that sort of stuff. So fantastic, awesome. excellent! Thanks yes, so much thank for you. having me, man. Thank you so much for this conversation. I took yeah. a lot out of it. <laughs> you know, it's really good to hear your take on things. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure, man. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Cheers, Adam. Cheers. Wow, thank you so much, Adam Biggs, for sharing all your wisdom with us. Some amazing stories. I'm so glad that you shared these special moments with us. I believe that the information that you've provided here in this interview is super valuable to most of our listeners, I hope. And uh, I really believe that this is some great stuff that all musicians who play live should tune into and listen to more than once. 
So please do me a huge favor. Uh, share this episode with everybody you know, especially musicians and touring acts who might actually take something valuable out of, of this and therefore produce better sounding live shows. If you ever need of a live sound engineer or audio production for your event, head over to bigsounds.com.au. That's Adam Big's website uh, where you can contact Adam directly. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate you hanging out with us. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and share this episode on your social media channels. Okay, if you want to reach out to me, you can do so via my website, mixartist.com.au. This is all for today. I hope you have a great week. I shall speak to you again next week. Bye for now. Bye for now.